Hello, hello, welcome everybody. Today I have Fonda Clark Hyatt with us to talk to us. Welcome, Fonda. Thank you. I'm so excited. It's brilliant to have you here. I can't believe how long we've been like ships in the nighting over getting this done. <laughs> I know I think it's my fault because I'm not big on being interviewed but I said I gotta do this yeah well you know big girls panties on all around I'm telling you need nobody right. wants to be in front of the camera well not me anyway so thank you for being here I wanted to ask you first because I know and I've heard you say it before that one of the ways you got into your creative practice was because you were gifted a watercolor set and you know that wasn't your thing but it opened the door for you what i want to know about is how you got from the watercolor set to where you are now you know it's really funny i loved my twin sister gave me the watercolor set when i was 34 i'd never created anything mm -hmm. and um never taken a class nothing but i i love the way it made me feel and i had young children and um dogs and the dog tails and the cats would go through the watercolor and they'd be just so so I got to find something so I started working with pastels and I loved pastels so much and you know all the colors are right there ready for you to use I know it's like and, a box of candy isn't it yes and there's and the hand wrapped handmade yeah. ones oh my gosh, you know, they're beautiful so I loved it and then I started having allergies and it got worse and worse like I was basically wearing a hazmat suit to to work and finally one day I thought I can't I can't do it anymore and I was just lost mm. just completely lost because that's I did while I did animals and pastels and um, that was my thing and so I thought I've got to find something something else mm. and I I, back then I wasn't journaling or doing mixed media but anyway I ran across a video on YouTube where someone was working with neo colors and doing mixed media and that was it I was like I got I got to get some of those because they don't have dust yeah you know the love affair began right yeah oh yeah and you know me and neo colors I'm all about neo colors yeah. and there's something for me about uh, no matter how long you go away from your piece of work, the colors are still there. Yeah. <laughs> they haven't dried out and all of that. So I started in on mixed media and here I am. <laughs> that piece about them not drying out is liberating, isn't it? Because I know with me, when I was starting to use acrylic and it would be really dry and I'd go and answer the phone or the kids would call and you'd walk away and you'd come back and all your paints were dry. Your paintbrush is just like completely trashed. And when I discovered the stay wet palette, that liberated acrylics for me because I could put out the colors, not these little dingy, like I'm going to waste it dibs, but I could be generous. And then you just put the lid on and it lasts for like a month or two. So that was, that was, did the same thing for me. Yeah. Yeah. I love those and I just kept forgetting to put the lid on. Yeah, we'll see. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm the worst though. I actually just stick my brush right in the, the, in the, the, tube. the tube or whatever. And I know that's, you know, I always tell people don't do what I do. But yeah, I just stick it right in there because it, I, I hate the waste. Yeah. And, and, you know, that's one of the reasons why I'm always working in another book so I can, you know put the leftover acrylics in there yeah um, because i can't remember to put the lid on the stay stay wet thing <laughs> yeah <laughs> do you leave your brushes in the water like i do and you come back all day every yeah. day it's <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm the worst and that's why i also don't really buy expensive brushes because um i'm hard i mean i have them and they're so pretty i i just don't use them you know because I just went out in pretty vases, you know. <laughs> they are. They're, it's so artistic looking, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I have to tell you, I was doing a video and I had picked up one of those nice brushes, and uh, somebody later said, Oh my gosh, your brushes are so nice. And I was like, You have no idea. You would die of botulism if you ever drank my water, my brush water by mistake. <laughs> I, I get in trouble if I leave mine out for my, from my daughter. If 
I leave the watercolour paper because the cat will drink it. And she's all oh, like, Mama. <laughs> <laughs> she cry. <laughs> yeah, otherwise, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just throw mine away. I have student grade brush, I just throw them away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One last I, thing, you know. I, I totally abuse my acrylic brushes, but I'm very good with my watercolour ones and my oils. But the acrylic ones are just like <laughs> Well, the watercolour ones you kinda have to, you know, you can ruin those really easily. You can, yeah. And and a decent watercolour brush is not cheap, so you can right. look after it a bit more. Yeah. And that's why I do watercolours. <laughs> oh yeah, that's why. <laughs> That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> uh, and the other thing I'm curious about is that you show up to your creative practice every day. Is that right? So it really is a practice in the yeah, you know, sense of practice. It, it, it really is. I decided a long time ago that um, I needed a, a container you know, for, uh, that I could work in without judgment. Let's put it that way. And if you don't show up and practice, you know, how's that going to work anyway in anything in life that you want to be good at, you know? And so I decided that I had to show up every day. Um, because I don't know how you are. I know myself well enough to know if I go, I don't feel good today so I think tomorrow I'll do it and then the next day comes and the next day and the next day and the next day so I needed a practice that I could you know show up to every day and um and explore you know the weird the odd the ugly whatever you know and that's what I do and so I have books and books and books I usually do a spread a day yeah yeah you know You're that's speaking. usually you paint faster too. Like I've, you know, seen your process, your pages, you, you knock out this amazing page in 15 minutes. I'm like four hours. I'm coming back to that page three days later and so forth. But you, I, don't, I think I love how, um, when I watch you paint, I love how detailed. And I think what happens is I'm skipping probably details that, um, that you are getting into your work. And because I'm not really looking at the end result as much as I'm looking at wh what's it telling me, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. what do I need? To do? What's my true, you know? Yeah. Well, that in itself is a practice because I'm curious about that, you know, like this idea of non-judgment and I, I mean, I, we all know it's very important in our creative process and um, you know, I'm often talking about discernment versus um, the criticism but even beyond that, you, you take the sort of non-judgment further. And how do you get to that place? Like, how do you get to that place? That's in itself is an art and a practice. I think the way I, <clears throat> excuse me, the way I got to it is by working every day and realizing that, uh, you know, let's face it, everything we do is, is not going to be good, even if we were trying for it to be some beautiful piece. I don't know how many uh, paintings you do in a month. If I were to do 10 paintings in a month, one might be what I would consider really good back in the day, you know. And so I started thinking about that process of who says it's good, why, you know. I, if I think it's good, if I think it's bad, it doesn't change anything. It's yeah. just my thought, you know, it's, it's attachment is how I look at it. And if I'm so attached to it being a certain way, then I am avoiding the truth of that piece of art and my truth that I'm trying to get into that art. Does that make sense? Or am I rambling? No, no, it does. What, I, what it brings to mind to me is that when I do a piece and particularly with a journal spread or something, there's this sort of like, you know, this bone wisdom, this inner knowing of when it's right or not, regardless of whether it looks finished or whether it looks, and which is another thing I want to talk to you about, this idea of beauty, because beauty is very definitely part of my medicine, you know, both giving and taking. But beauty is, um, 
one of those terms in our society which is kind of being boxed and right. i don't see it that way beauty for me is like a, it's a portal into the moment rather than um a prettiness sort of thing and i know you talk about beauty as well as being outside of you know the weird the ugly and all of those things included into beauty i think i just I mean, asked two questions then sorry <laughs> For me, um, when you have a judgment about beauty, no matter what you see, the only things that are beautiful are what you've decided your judgment is. So, like, say you only thought um, people were beautiful if they had blonde hair, then you don't see anything else but those blonde haired people. You don't really notice all of the beauty in those other people. And so for me, <clears throat> I'm always looking at um, things that people don't think are beautiful to see if I can find that piece, you know, that rusty, we all know, you know, now we love rusty pieces and vintage pieces and all of that. But I think I was telling someone a story about the chair down the street. I mean, there's a chair outside. It's upholstered at my neighbors down the street. I don't know him to talk to him. It's been out there for like seven months. It is nasty, but now it's kind of got this really cool moldy patina. It's eaten away at the edges and it's getting more and more beautiful to me because yeah. I'm paying attention to the yes. detail. Yes. yes, that's a big yeah. one for me too, that paying attention. Yeah. yeah, and it's very difficult to pay attention if you have prejudged beauty. Yeah. In my, you know. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, you know, it, for me, I, I do find the beauty in all those little, for me, the, some of the most beautiful things is the way the light might come in the window and create shadows. And it's that transitory, you know, beauty is like this, it's a moment that passes that reminds us how beautiful life is, right? So it's a portal into paying attention to life and the gifts of life. And so for me, it's very entwined with this idea of grief as well, which I know is another element that comes up in your work as part of that too. Yeah, the, I, I, what I try to do is um, we all want to be happy and peaceful and hopeful and joyful, but there's a whole nother part of life. It's like every painting needs a little bit of black, you know? our lives have to be balanced and for them to be rich. I think I saw a meme today where somebody said something to the effect of, um, you know, I'm wise because I've been foolish or, you know, there's that, there's that yin and yang for me. And so there is so much beauty in grief. Yes, there and, is. And there and is. Gifts. And it, and gifts. Yes. Yeah, so many gifts. And there's, there's beauty. Um, someone was saying something the other day about um, before enlightenment, there's despair, you know, and sometimes if we can look at it like that, like these are all cycles. You talk a lot about creative cycles, mm -hmm. all of those cycles. If we can start to kind of ride them and feel them and yeah. understand them and pay attention, because I think, I don't know about in your country, a lot in my country, people run from discomfort, mm -hmm. you know, and so, okay, you're just, you're uncomfortable and you ran. So there was no benefit. Yeah. At, whereas if sometimes we can sit in our discomfort for a few minutes, there's some benefit and the same in a painting. When I'm uncomfortable in a painting, what's the lesson? What's the truth? What's the message, you know? And so arm on their head okay <laughs> that's what's coming up that's you know there's a message for me yeah so and do you think that in your process you get to that just by staying open to the questions it's like how does I think, I think it's not judging you know because um people always say to me in class like you like everybody's stuff well that's right there is beauty in every piece of art there's beauty i can always find beauty in everything and i think you just have to stay open to not judging 
some of the best art I saw today, one of the people in one of my group's son, who's seven, he did a picture and oh my gosh, I just, I was like, I want to buy that picture, <laughs> you know? And he was saying, when I grew up on being an artist, you already are an artist, you know? Yeah. And so if you can stay open and be authentic, I guess for me, beauty is authenticity is what it comes down to. And if we can stay open, we can be authentic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I know that in your work, a lot of it is related to truths, to getting to your truth and to speaking your truths. Um, that could be hard for people because people don't always know what their truths are. Well, um, yeah. I mean, one of the reasons I started the process is because I came from a family where no one ever spoke their truth ever. And, um, that's abuse in a way because everything's a lie, you know, and I think a lot of us, you know, are struggling with truth right now in the world today, you know, and so um, my process was about how can I find my truth because I did not want to leave this world without having spoken my truth. It just got to be a, um, I mean, it just got to be a drive, a passion of mine. Like, what's my truth? Because I didn't know. I didn't know what the truth was for me. And so as I was excavating in all of my many journals, I found a way to take those layers, layer after layer after layer. And now it's really easy for me to sit down and tell my truth. But it wasn't in the beginning. You know, I just had to work and work and work at it. Mm. And so now you know your truths. I got to make the plural truths. Truths. Yeah, because they change. My truth right now might be, um, you know, I'm tired or whatever. And tomorrow it might be something else. Or the next day, sometimes my truth is like, I don't want to do this. <laughs> I don't want to sit down and journal the day. Whatever it is, um, it's little snippets of a story. Yeah. And over time, certainly over an entire month, for instance, when I go through the journal, I, I see an overall picture, you know, of yeah. all of those came together for a truth for me, you know. Yeah. And truths can be contradictory too. We can yeah. have both and at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we can hold opposing truths, you know, and that's the beauty of being human. Yes. You know? We can hold the ugly and the beautiful all together, you know, and yeah. And as you were talking before about in enlightenment too, this, you know, this is idea and a lot of these things, in, including the judgment of art, that there's some sort of hierarchy and we can sort of take that away and replace it with this idea of cycles that you were talking about, where everything can be the beautiful and the ugly. I mean, you can still have ugly, but doesn't mean you're judging it as, you know lesser than or well i don't judge myself you know um i don't judge myself for creating something that's not beautiful mm -hmm. and and the freedom in that then is that then i'm free you know children don't judge their artwork mm -hmm. you know they don't judge themselves until they get to be a certain age and then it's on you know, you, you have kid. I, and my kids did it too. Yeah. And so if we can get back to that stage of, of not judging ourselves, then our artwork becomes even better in my opinion. And there is a hierarchy because you know, yourself are, I don't know how your cycle is, but I'll be going along and man, it's just flowing. And I'm like, I got this. I know about this artist thing. I got it. And then all of a sudden it's just like I have never created anything, mm. you know, it's, it's, and it's just part of the cycle and you just keep going and keep going until you get back to the, I got this part. <laughs> yeah. See, I see that as a cycle rather than here. I, I take that as a natural part of it. And I try right. not to judge that when it comes because I know it will change. Right. And, you know, and that knowledge of knowing things will change and things cycle has gotten me through this year. <laughs> me too. Trust me when I tell you. Me. Yeah, I do. <laughs>
Yeah, I mean, you just have to know, and I think you have to pay attention to those details of of what what your cycle is. Exactly. You know, my cycle is a really long cycle, and so the very first time that I got out of the flow, I was so freaked out, like, what happened? Yeah. And then over time, you oh, I recognize, it. yeah. Yeah. And I sit down every day, whether I'm in the flow or not. Yeah. Which is what Picasso says, isn't it? The muses want to find you working. Mm -hmm. My yeah. muses come looking for me in the shower, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know because how, how, you know, I don't know about you, but the best art I've ever created is in my mind. You know, <laughs> I'm like going, man. And then you get home and you're like, well you know it's yeah gone. There's, there's little threads sometimes and if you can't get to the idea when it's fresh i i sometimes lose those threads you know life gets in the way of for me sitting down every day and my creative practice doesn't have that same sort of regimen of sitting down like yours but i will still have these other ways that i come to it my little invitations to kind of trick myself you know, to, yeah. to show up in some way and do some sort of creating or creativity or, or whatnot, whether it's, you know, doodling or sketchbooking or you know, rather than necessarily an art journal spread or, or a piece, you know, I will still do something. Hmm. Yeah, because if I, I have this weird thing, like if I lose interest, it's all over. So, for instance, if I were to start a spread today and come back to it tomorrow, the whole thing would have to be painted over because there's something else happening today and I can't pull on that thread. You know, I can't, it's got to be, <laughs> it's got to be done in that, in that one session, you know, yeah. for me. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? It's always fascinating how those little things are different for people because I can like work on a spread over a few days or even longer because it might be exploring a particular thing and I've been sitting with that and more things have been unpeeled. And so like I can keep going on us on in that regard. So it's fascinating that. Yeah. I start, <laughs> I start I start judging it and going, what was I thinking? I don't even know what yeah. I was thinking, you know? And as soon as I do that, it's all over. So just, I have to, if I get interrupted for whatever, cause life interrupts, you know, yeah. I just turn the page. I'm telling you, don't ever take up oils. <laughs> no. I'm learning patience why? with oils. Exactly. You, they're just like. <laughs> and here, so humid it would be months that would never work for me because uh -uh. but it's not the humidity that stops them because they don't actually dry they oxidize oh really yeah yeah i love oils and i love the depth yeah and the uh, the richness yeah they're but, yeah no because the first thing that would happen is one of the kids or a dog or something would swipe across it and then i would that would be it <laughs> you just wouldn't have the patience <laughs> you know what i have no patience you were saying earlier that i worked quickly i because i don't have any patience and i know that about myself so got to move right along <laughs> well that's one of the things another thing that i know comes up in your work as well is these lessons on and off the canvas or on and off the journal spread you know what's showing up on your page or what's showing up in your life there's like this mirror well our art is always a mirror right of where we are what we're feeling I, I would assume unless you're just doing um i don't even know what i mean i guess if you were doing like hotel art i don't know i don't know but otherwise it's all about where you are and what's happening just to the best of an artist's ability you know yeah. To describe it you know in their art and so yeah it's always a mirror and um you know if i'm if i'm down and dark you know that's usually what my pages look like you know or if i'm feeling kind of childlike that's what that's what they look like um 
yeah I don't know any other way to do it I don't think no but that's that comes back to what you were saying earlier about authentic you know you're expressing what comes up for you well yeah and then what happens is I get a few words and I plop those on there and so then I've done my written journaling and my art journaling all at one time I'm done <laughs> It's almost like your art journaling is like your morning pages. They are. You know, I started doing morning pages one time a long time ago, and I don't have that much to say, believe it or not. Yeah. And so I'm more of a, uh, I'm not writing haikus, but I just get two or three words, and I had this whole journal, and on each page were just like two or three words. And I thought, this is just not the way you're supposed to do this, probably. I don't know, but. The words would come to me, just two or three words, and that was it. You just I was dumb. Economical with your words. You're just kind of like. <laughs> what I'm writing, yeah, I mean, I, I just don't, I don't even know how someone would write a book, truthfully, because I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> you know, a few sentences. So once I get those few words, the page is done, too, you know, so. So is that how you finish your pages when the words come you feel complete when they they'll cut they'll start coming to me and then when they're set and i can't nothing else comes up that's it i'm done once you see me writing the words i don't every now and then if i've you know like something's come unstuck or you know but for the most part once i'm writing the words that page is done and i don't ever go back i know a lot of artists will take their old work and redo and re I don't even I don't go back I don't yeah that's my truth in that moment so I don't see how I could change it that's you know? interesting isn't it because you know anyone who's done a lesson with me will know that I go okay I'm all done and I'll turn the camera off and then like 30 seconds later I'm back on again one more thing <laughs> and that might go on like <laughs> for ages. <laughs> Even like this painting here she has done so many times and I still don't think she's done well, look at her just look at her you, you know, know that's done I think she's beautiful see so I, I'm always envious I'll watch you in your classes and I'm just like how is she doing that and you're so patient you know yes, I need to change funny. I don't consider myself patient but there you go <laughs> but you are you are and it shows up in your artwork because you know with me, uh, five iterations ago, I would have put the words on so I could be. <laughs> <laughs> She's my bushfire. She, like I started her before the bushfires, through the bushfires, and then came back. And like, there's like, there's a lot in there, but she's still not. I I guess you know, waiting for that bit in that she feels complete. Yeah. You know, so. And, and that's, that's how you know. I think for both of us, even though it looks different, we both are listening to that inner knowing and responding to that. And it's just, and our art practice, I, I don't know for you, but for me, my art practice is one of the ways that I hone that skill of listening to myself and my bone wisdom and, and so on. So that and then I can, you know, take it further into the, into the world but you know in my art practice is a way of practicing that in, in you know training that in some ways yeah I think it's um you know I'm always amazed and particularly while we were all shel shel I think I said this to you earlier while we were sheltering at home at people who don't have a way to listen to themselves whether it's art or music or meditation or or whatever whatever it is um, I don't know what I would do because you're creating a container of time to be with yourself is really what yeah. you're doing, create. And so, um, you know, I always love when people on just regular social media are talking about self care and do you create time for a bath? Well, no, I don't want to take a bath. <laughs> I want to sit down and create, you know? So, I mean, yeah. I take, yeah, but you know, <laughs> I do. And my self care is art, not a bath. You know. Yeah. 
Yeah. I, I like to think of the art as a space holder. I think it really does. Yeah. It's a space holder for us for so much. Yeah. It, it really is. And, um, you know, going back, I was just sitting here thinking about your, um, oh, what did you call them? In the Make Create Express, it wasn't mandalas, but you were doing all the circles. You remember? You did the watercolor circles. Oh, that was just uh, circles. <laughs> but it was okay. meditative. Well, meditative circles, right? And I had so much fun doing that. And um, and I'm and watching you, you were doing um, meditation to music. I had so much fun. But my problem with that is I don't know when it's finished. Yeah. Because I can't put words, <laughs> you know, I can't. I, no words come up for that. So I love to watch you do it because it's something that I rarely do. Yeah. Well, they one of the things they say is that like for Western women particularly, and I think this is part of the Julia Cameron with the morning pages, is that we need to have a moving meditation. And so sometimes that watercolor play, just nice and simple and gentle, occupies the hand so that the to-do list is shut up. And we can just drop in, you know, my practice is very um, contemplative, like I'm very much in communion with myself and with whatever else when I do that. And that just occupies the hand, you know, and gives me something beautiful to look at as well. And, you know, I don't see that for me, that's um, practice, you know, like that's not a piece that's just. I'm just playing with colors and watching and feeding that intuitive well and learning how, which colors I like and how they mix and get a hand. It's so, calming. Hey? it's so calming to watch you do it. It's calming to do. It's just, it's the, it's the process, right? It's just something to do. So. <laughs> I thought about halfway down the page and thought, I wonder if I could just cut this page in half. Of course you <laughs> can. And I, I did, but I was laughing at myself because I was like, you know, it's so calming when you do it. <laughs> well, you have your own calming thing. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, this is the thing of trying different things to find out what works. You know, everybody's so different with these things. Our pros, there's so much variation in creativity, right? So, and art making that we can each find our own unique medicine we can find our niche you know and it is it's amazing i mean in the beginning i tried all kinds of things and all kinds of materials and um yeah and then you know you know like when you keep reaching for that same thing over and over again you know okay this is you know this and is my niche and I love up, to right? pardon that's part of the showing up it is and you show up and it's for instance um, I love abstracts, but again, I don't ever know when they're finished. I don't get that, you know, that, oh, okay, I'm done, yeah. you know. And so I wouldn't know that if I hadn't tried a lot. Yeah. Because <laughs> it just seemed to me like abstract arts would be really easy because you're not drawing anything. Hmm. Does that make sense? So I was like, oh, I won't have to learn how to draw whatever. Because, and I just, it never worked for me. It was not my niche. And that's, I know that because I've tried. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, and not your niche now. That doesn't mean yeah. that that might not change. Exactly. Mm. And yeah, we all go through, you know, that new thing that lights us up, you know, yeah. whether it's sculpture or weaving or painting or whatever. Yeah, I'm a bit of a shiny butterfly girl, you know. <laughs> I'm all the time following little shiny butterflies down different paths. <laughs> I'm the worst. And the worst thing, I, I think I had posted about this uh, at the first year, the worst thing is when you open the mail and you've ordered some supply that you really need to go follow that butterfly, and but you can't Because you lost that thread. <laughs> Because <laughs> you lost it, and so then you've got this supply, you know. And so I've tried really hard to stay away from. It. Yeah, I've never done that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm over here crying in the middle of my studio floor because I'm trying to 
declutter. <laughs> well, we're so removed from anywhere, you know, like if something's coming, it takes a while. I can't just run to an art shop and often I'm getting things yeah. shipped overseas from overseas anyway. None of this Amazon next day delivery for us over here. So the threat's no. well and truly gone. <laughs> Well, and I'm not near any kind of art store either. And so, yeah, thank goodness I can order stuff. But yeah, same same thing. Yeah. I don't really, there's a few things that show up next day, but sometimes, especially now, it takes a whole lot longer. And yeah, then it shows up and I'm thinking, why? Just why? <laughs> but it's always <laughs> going to be that one thing that's going to be just, you know, yeah. Yeah, and you know, the one thing is sitting down and playing that is the one tool that makes a difference in your art that's yeah. you know that's what i've learned it's the one thing all the rest of it you can make crayons work you know yeah so yeah. tell me your workshop the down deep is so loved and seems to really um pull something out of people what do you think it's unlocking in people I think it's permission, you know, to do whatever, whatever comes up. And it's, to me, it's like laying on the ground, looking at the clouds and thinking up pictures, you know, and that's a process that we all are familiar with as children. Oh, that looks like an elephant. That looks like a clown. And then to do that in your artwork and to say, if you see it, it's there for a reason, bring it out. And people do, and they're just amazed. Oh, I would have never thought to paint this, you know? And so, because, you know, I don't paint elephants or whatever. And so I think it's, a, it's, it's freedom to, to just bring forth whatever and see if that's something that you're interested in pursuing. And I'm, I'm hoping that's what it is. That's what I'm trying to teach. You know, it's just a process of sitting down and tell the truth. And the truth is what you see in that moment. So, yeah. And just think for you and me both, if it wasn't for our art channel, just think what we'd be doing to our ceilings and all the little critters in the timber up there. <laughs> well, I have wood walls. And so the knots, there's, yeah. I, there's creatures everywhere. I know. I keep wanting to paint some of mine. I'm thinking, I can't cover him over. And <laughs> I always think if I got a wood burning tool, I wonder if I could like shade it out so it would really pop, you know, in the wood. And then I'm thinking, what am I? Yeah, you, you haven't got the patience for that. <laughs> I have the patience. And just I'll make just burn. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I actually have taken pictures though, and, yeah. you know, so that I could recreate it yeah that's one of my earliest memories i think when i was little we had mosaic um floor in the bathroom and i'd sit on the toilet with my little legs dangling and look at all the you know all the imagery in the tiles and stuff yeah because you i can't help it i, I and not only do i do it but people are always saying in class now you've got me doing it and i'm like good you yeah know? It's good imagination <laughs> yeah yeah I wonder what it is that switches that off for people that they didn't do it for a while because surely they did it as a child. I think that we're inoculated with grown up stuff, you know, like let's go. We got to go to school. We got to be there in five minutes. Quit standing around looking at the sidewalk. You know, I don't, I'm a twin. I don't know how many times my mother was like, come on, you know, and there's not time to you know to think because yeah. we're so busy and our schedules are moving and moving and i've done it too you know i got to get to work and come on let's go and you know or i'm trying to get my granddaughter in the car and you know what that's like when they're like three you're like here 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 yeah yeah get in the car yeah so yeah. i always think that that time yeah. where you've got nothing to do boredom boredom is brilliant boredom is good for us you know and i always made sure my kids had time to be bored to have that quiet time with their imagination and stuff like that and even now you know I, even as i know it i don't know it but rest is really part of the process it is an important part of i hate to use the word pr production but it is part of 
productive process. You get so much work done when you rest, but we still yeah. don't give ourselves permission. You know, I, um, I'm an early to bed and not on purpose, but I wake up every morning at five o'clock and it's just, and if I were to go to bed at like 11, that would not be a good thing. Mm -hmm. And so because I wake up, I think we have to pay attention to the cycles in our bodies too yeah. and, and make sure we get the rest that we need. I don't know about you, but if I haven't slept, nothing's going to go right. Yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> not yeah. That, I'm amazed you know? sleep too. <laughs> yeah, but you're right. I mean, good nutrition, all of the things that make you good at anything, not just being an artist, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. Including creativity, creativity. For me, you know, when you do that um, self-care list, paying attention is the most important thing on the, to, yeah. on the self-care list. Paying attention to what it is that you actually need, not just having the bath and doing the whatever, but finding out what is it that I need in this moment. And, you know. Mm -hmm. And that. so often we don't ask ourselves that, particularly I think as women, you know, we're always giving giving out mm. and you know not not giving in mm. and so i i really value that time to say what do i need right now you know do i need to just walk away do i need to make a big splat do i you know yeah well you know in in relation to that how is it that you protect or honor or put boundaries around that creative time that you have every day when you have all these other things that you do. I mean, I always think of you like superwoman. You're just like crazy superwoman. You are. <laughs> you know, I get up at five. Nobody else is interested in interrupting me at five o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> They're just not. As a matter of fact, I'm usually sitting around going, these people need to get up and get to work, you know, uh, because I've been up since five. So I want people to show up and do whatever I need them to do, you know. Yeah. Um, but no, I've always been an early riser. And, and even when the kids were younger, um, I just knew. I knew. I have, uh, I have two children of my own, and I had three stepchildren, and they all five of them lived here. And I was like, I have to, or I won't be able to function. You know, you got to take your own oxygen. You got to get put the oxygen mass first and i was uh i was dealing that's a lot of people to deal with with a lot of needs especially during the teenage years i just knew i had to have that time and they knew too yeah <laughs> they were constantly like don't you have some art you need to be doing <laughs> <laughs> just go on in there mom <laughs> that's funny <laughs> yeah but i think it's important that we set boundaries around what we need mm -hmm. maybe a lot of women haven't been taught that and I know I spent years not doing it too but these days I have really strong boundaries around the things that I want to do yeah yeah <laughs> you know yeah. well yeah I for me boundaries are you know people sort of see them as quite negative but I see them as like again a space holder they are a space holder it's a container it's and they can be fluid. You can, they don't have to be like bricks. They can be permeable as you choose them to be, right? But they are a space holder, a container for what you need. Yeah. Well, and there's that whole piece about what I need to do is just as important as, uh, just as, not more, but just as important. You know, and so I'm, I've tried to raise my children in that way, too, that, you know, you are important. This is your life. You have to make time for the things that you want to do and the things that you need to do to be healthy. And so what I need is just as important as what everybody else needs. Yeah. You know, so to me, the boundaries are, are my way of saying, yeah, this is this is important. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And there's freedom in that for everybody within that structure mm -hmm. too. Yeah. Yeah. And absolutely. your art journals help you know what they are, right? You help you to know what it is that you need in order to put the boundaries. And there's that whole circular. 
Yeah. And there's times that something will come up. Um, I was just actually looking at a journal. There's times when things come up in my journal that I didn't realize was writing me, you know, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden I go, Oh, okay. That's what I need to do. You know, that's, that's what I need to look at. That's the issue. And once I know it, because if you don't know, you can't do anything about anything. <laughs> well, you can, you can be reactionary without even knowing rather than yeah. choosing to respond. Right. I always am trying to be proactive uh, for myself because <laughs> no one wants me reacting around yeah. here. You know? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, me good. So <laughs> I try to get out ahead of the game on that one. <laughs> yeah. I think I might um, let you go to your evening, but before we do, is there anything else you want to share with us? Oh, I mean, that's a big question. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, you know, I, the only thing I would share is what I share with everyone in my classes. If it's at all possible, when you sit down, ask yourself, what's my truth? What do I need? That's, that I think is the, the first stone in that pathway, you know, and um, that's it. <laughs> that's, you don't even have to now take my classes. You now know it all, right? <laughs> <laughs> but, that, but that's an art still, you know. I think there's yeah. so much just in the asking, right, and, and the opening of a question. But still, you know. Yeah, sitting down yeah. with that question is a big one. It's a, it's a really big one and it's a scary one for a lot of people. And, um, and it's been a scary one for me in the past. Uh, but with practice, it gets a whole lot less scary, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, tell everyone where they can find you. Um, you can find me on the Art is Magic <laughs> website. And I have my own website, FondaClarkHate.com. And on Facebook, it's FondaClarkHate. And I'm on Instagram, FondaClarkHate, right? <laughs> and and um, I've got a group that's been kind of circling up called Pause for Play on Facebook, where we're just playing. <laughs> you know, people, even if it's crafts, people are just supporting one another. So... You can find me if you put my name in anyway. <laughs> we'll put the links below. People will be able to come and have a look at all your truthful work. <laughs> I think that's what, you know, because people resonate so much with your work. And I think it is that. It is full of your truths. And people can sense that. That, and I think, you know, it's funny. Like, I have one truth. And when they look at it, they put their own truth mm -hmm. into it. Yeah. And I feel like that's always a win-win for the artist and the viewer, you know, when that happens. Yeah. 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 So all right, that's me. It's so good to chat with you finally. All these years, the first time face to face. So. <laughs> no. It was wonderful. You made it so comfortable. Yeah, wonderful. <laughs> I'm going to press stop on the recording. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>